What's up, guys? This is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach reaction to Q Season 4, Episode 10. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. The funny thing about this comment is that just yesterday I was talking to my video editor James about how to plan for this next video as we continue to increase the production quality and he said he was excited for me to react to this episode and I told him that in all honesty I enjoyed the different feel of the previous episode from 9 but it was starting to get a little slow towards the end and I'm just a pure athlete. I can't wait for the action, the practices, and the games and like I said in the previous video it is important that a story does have multiple perspectives, emotions, and feels for different episodes. But at the end of the day, I think we all just want to see some volleyball. So if you're excited and James is excited, then this is going to be a great episode. I appreciate you making this list to help me understand when each tournament is happening because I'm just so used to the tournament and volleyball season schedules in the US. And I just need to take the time to really study how volleyball seasons are in Japanese high school volleyball. Actually, I'll share with you how American volleyball schedules are, specifically the boys high school season. In January, a lot of teams will start to prepare for the upcoming season with open gyms and training. And then the official high school season usually starts in February and goes through April or May, depending on how well you do. And then for the more serious players, they will join a club team for a one to two month summer season where they compete against club teams from all around the United States. Then they'll take a short break during the summer where a lot of them will go to college volleyball camps to try to get recruited or just to improve their skills during the off season. And then their club season starts in August and goes for about three months all the way through December and January. It's been so long since the first couple episodes in season one where Hinata was the only one on his club team who actually cared about volleyball. And just goes to show why Hinata values every single moment, whether it's one pass, one serve, getting extra practice time. And even though it was unfortunate that he was the only one on his team that wanted to get better and train, it actually built a great habit in him to value every volleyball moment that he has. Hopefully you've noticed another improvement in the production quality. I recently purchased a brand new Sony Z1 digital camera and this is going to be my new dedicated studio camera. Thanks again to all the Patreon fans for your financial support. All the money from Patreon goes directly back into this channel. You also get early access to special videos like my high Q reaction and specific volleyball games, monthly live Q&A sessions, my private blog, and other exclusive content. So if you want to directly support this channel, make sure you sign up with the link below. Now let's get this high Q party started. You might have noticed a change in the video quality midway through after the intro, transitioning into the reaction video. Apologize for the technical difficulties that I'm having. It's not James's fault. It's, I'm just having trouble getting this camera working. It's my first time working with a digital camera and the settings were a little challenging to deal with. And instead of delaying the release of this reaction video, I decided to go back to my webcam just to make sure that you guys still get one sooner than later. So thanks for your patience. I'm pretty sure we'll figure out by the next reaction video. Yes, the sentimental guitar music. You know, there's going to be some emotional element in this scene. Nice that! Coach Ukai always on the phone like a G. Mm, that is the challenge of coaching tournaments. As a coach, one of the big stressors, especially at a tournament, is timing the warm up. And it might seem like a small thing, but if you really think about it, tournament matches are usually shorter, at least in the US. So you're playing best of three maybe straight two sets instead of best of five. Even if you're playing best of five, it's important to time your warm up because you wanna to get to a good start because you're playing so many matches. You wanna conserve your energy as much as possible. You don't wanna get your players too warmed up because then they'll fatigue them. And if, obviously if you warm them up too late, then they're not gonna be ready for the match. So timing it is really important 
and it's up to the coach to watch the score and to make sure that your athletes are ready. Yeah, that's a little boy. I wonder if they're also including the middle school teams at this tournament. Of course, the obligatory pre-game pre bathroom talks and vomits and poops. That's a very well illustrated suitcase. Uh oh, was he taking the wrong bag? That was an interesting scene, so I'm pretty, pretty sure they'll refer to that later. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes you gotta talk out loud to calm yourself. That's why we have Shimizu to take care of all the little things. Uh oh. Oh, it's the little boy. He probably switched it with them. I don't know what's going to happen, but this brings chills down my spine. One of the worst fears is opening your gym bag on a tournament day where you've traveled there and you either don't have your jerseys, you don't have the right shorts, or you only got one shoe, something that's missing. And one habit I always try to train into my players is double check your bag before you go to sleep and then double check it in the morning. I remember I was coaching a team one year or I was helping coach a team and one of the players forgot their jerseys and it's because the mom packed the bag. And this is a high school student. I think that was a really important lesson for her to learn because the only way you are 100% sure whether you have things is if you have a jersey. Now, unfortunately, she couldn't play the first two games because the rule is you if you don't have your jersey, you can't play. And at least on the teams that I coach with, I don't think it's fair to switch with another player that is a bench player. And I know that a lot of teams do that because this player was a starter. Some teams might just think, well, why can't she just switch jerseys with one of the other players because she doesn't play very much? But that's a great way to demoralize not just that one bench player, but the entire team. As a coach, you want to reward good behavior, right? You want to reward the bench player for remembering to bring their jersey and being responsible enough. And you don't want to reward a player for not building the habit of packing their own things and remembering their jersey. So let's see what happens here. Oh, shoes. You know, that's not the worst. I'd rather forget my jerseys and shoes because someone usually has an extra pair of shoes or you can just wear the shoes that you're walking to the gym with. Not the worst. Battle lines. Ooh, that was a great effect. If you zoom in on Hinata's face, you see how there's just like a little bit of an extra shadow, kind of kind of like the world is closing in or you just want to hide. That was a really cool illustration effect there, or technically this is an animated portion, but it's just a still frame for a couple seconds. <laughs> and I love how Kageyama in the corner is just chilling and drinking his pre-game drink. Natsu's. Oh, poor Yamaguchi. I would feel guilty too. Oh, wow, I was in, in a completely other gym. <laughs> Smart. This is this is all part of like very real tournament experiences stuff gets misplaced stuff gets stolen at least in this situation you know the goods are not stolen which is common and unfortunately outside of japan 
That's truth. Good, wise words to deal with stressful situations in the future. Oh, this is great. Man, she is such a good team manager. She really does. Oh, and she's running. Sense of urgency. <laughs> Yeah, this is a lot of unnecessary stress for such an important tournament. And that could definitely affect the gameplay. But part of being a good team is learning how to adapt at stress. Uh, she having a little flashback to her athletic career where she got her leg scars okay this is me just being picky if you're sprinting and hurdling if you're a track and field athlete let me know in the comments below because we got to represent you guys when you're sprinting you actually don't want your heels to contact the floor like when you're walking so this is not well animated sprinting mechanics. You actually should be running on the balls of your foot and your foot should be extending forward, grabbing the ground and then pulling your body forward. And another side note, unfortunately in the US, boys high school season is in the same season as track and field and I would have loved doing track and field like hurdles and sprinting. It just makes you a better athlete. You just work on movement mechanics. You get good at one job, which is just to get faster or to jump higher. I would have loved high jump. It's another fantasy of mine. With some good animation. That was a dramatic flashback. Oh, it's still going. Oh, no. I think it is still going. She's got pigtails on. So they were friends before she was a team manager. Still doesn't explain why she quit the sport. I know she had scars, but she could have still ran track and field unless she got a really bad injury. Yeah, you do grow very close to the team. I want to add on to Shimizu's story with her flashbacks about how she became a team manager. Being a team manager is such an important role on the team. I recently started coaching at Moreau Catholic High School in Hayward and our first two seasons, we had two very, very, very good team managers. It's a position that makes the team 5% better. 5% is a lot. They help run drills, they take stats, and the importance of taking stats not just requires a lot of focus and understanding the game, but it also frees up one more coach to provide more feedback for another player or to play against the team or to enter more balls. Also, when they just take care of all the smaller things like getting the scoreboard set up in practice, making sure things get put away, it, it allows the players to focus 5% more on the task at hand, which is their training. So if you try out for a volleyball team but you don't make it but you still love the game and you still want to be involved with the team and the team culture i highly recommend talking to the coach to see if you can be a team manager and just help out in practice it's a great way to contribute and be a part of the team culture but also to get better as you saw from hinata being the ball boy 
Maybe because it's the sport court, drift floor. That's one of the most popular brands for international volleyball. It has really good grip, but doesn't slide as well. Oh, huge ceilings. Getting used to the depth perception is really diff difficult. Oh, he's probably telling them that so they can get used to the depth perception sooner. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're nervous, your hands get sweaty, and they do get a little cold. Mm. Yeah, you can either get nervous or excited. <laughs> Ooh, that was a smooth sequence. Oh, running birth, but oh. <laughs> I want to watch that toss to Libero passing and hitting lines to Kageyama setting. Man, that was just fluid. It's one of the best animations of a warm up I've seen. Oh, they found the boy. There's Hinata's signature's red shoes. Oh no, the bus left. Now she's determined. She's gonna chase. Oh, she's gonna jog back. Man, this is the. I wanna hire Shimizu for my team manager. <laughs> Tanaka with his cool pose. We gotta check that out again. What is he doing with his fingers? Doing like some Metallica signs. He's looking like he's posing for a K pop band cover. Being a good team manager takes practice too. It's not just a passive job. It's, it's something you have, you have to get good at tossing, get good at stats. Oh, what a powerful metaphor for Shimizu being a former track and field athlete. No wonder she has a great sense of urgency because she's a sprinter or a hurdler and she's able to use that skill to contribute to the team, a career that she had to put away and adopt a new career, and now she's able to combine both. So poetic, man. Japanese poetry, top notch. Oh, is she gonna jump over a, a metal pole? Hell yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. Man, another great parallel of storytelling. Clutch throw too. Come on, show a flashback where she's doing like a shock put or something so she can apply those skills to this. That's right. Shimizu is the hero of this moment. I would treat her to uh, many, many meals. Suba. I gotta practice these names here. Suba Kihara. That's one great way to deal with your anxiety is just to yell and to scream. Get it out of your system. Since we are at a half time point, I want to make a special announcement as some of you already know I just released my 
brand new 12 month jump training program and it also released alongside my brand new elevate yourself training mobile and web app which means you can take my elite level jump training program with you anywhere on your phone any gym you want and it's a 12 month program so you know exactly what to do for an entire year i'm also offering a special 20 percent off new year discount both the monthly subscription and the lifetime membership so make sure you use that code new year 2022 with the link in the description box and start jumping higher today now let's get back to the fat bird that needs my vertical jump train program look at that struggling to get up in the air you should sign up and i know this is only halfway through the episode so they're not going to cut it off they're going to actually play and we're going to get some action in this episode Hmm. I gotta read that again. I wonder why Coach Ukai said it was a blessing in disguise. It's hard to like enjoy the anime and also read the dialogue. Seem to be over it. Oh, maybe the losing the shoes was a distraction from the game. <laughs> Way to call him out, coach. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs to watch out for number 10. Especially in transition. Yeah, that's right. Now that they beat Shiro Toizawa, they have this aura about him where everyone is like, oh, that's the team that beat Shiro Toizawa. So, first time where Karasuno has their reputation precede them. There's the Tanaka from Tsubikara. Yeah, that's good words from the captain. And this must be the thoughtful player. <laughs> That's this is a good word, good words from a captain. Repeat of last year, that means Subaki, Subahi Kara is going to have a flashback about what happened last year. Can't we just see that? Swallowed up by the crowd, that means maybe the one that gets too distracted by the atmosphere is the one that will disappear and lose. Kageyama, the first server, of course. This is what usually happens to me whenever I play in a big gym. It makes everything feel so small that you feel like you have to hit longer or spike deeper just to hit it in. When reality is you have to remember to just keep your mechanics and the feel the same regardless of the depth perception. But that is a very real consideration when you're playing in a new atmosphere. So I'm not surprised that Kageyama misses first serve because I do that all the time. I feel like, oh, the, the court's only this small, so I gotta really, really hit it in. Okay, Tsuba, hi. I'm gonna call him Tsuba because remembering to call him Tsuba Hikara is gonna be a little difficult. And that's a good spot to serve right in between Kagiyama and Naka. Good Number four. Oh, they got the pre-game video. They're gonna run him back row in transition now they got the dig. Ooh, running the seam. Got Nishinoya with a signature knee dive. Nice 
That's why at this at this level, teams aren't gonna make a lot of mistakes here. No freebies. They're gonna do the free quick. Oh, misconnection, that's so rare. Maybe the pressure of this new environment's getting to them. Yeah, this death reception can really throw you off. I know I keep saying that, but it takes a while to dial in. Yeah, the setter, you are definitely the most affected because you have to judge the the distance for the pass, different distances for the set. Ooh, Kageyama apologizing. <laughs> that gives Hinata so much pleasure. Yeah, it's okay. No, I think they do play best of five, if I remember, in tournaments. Oh, but when you work hard, good things happen. Yeah, everyone's there to support Kageyama, they know that. He doesn't make mistakes because he's not trying. Oh, okay. He wasn't able to sync up, that's right, with Kageyama because he couldn't jump in hitting lines. <laughs> the innocent response. <laughs> the reverse psychology did not work. Oh, this is this this is not the synchronized attack. This is the in the crowd attack. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> the reverse reverse psychology. <laughs> Another misconnection, but Nishinoi is going to save it. <laughs> what was that? Oh, we got to see that again. What do you call that move? The Buddhist statue. <laughs> Easy <choice. laughs> That's gotta be one of my favorite moments of the season so far. That's when you just gotta laugh off yourself and just enjoy the point. Four point gap. Oh, Yamaguchi, my boy! Maybe just to get some extra energy, a couple more aces. Yeah, you have to visualize, so important. Shimada Mart. That's great advice. Don't wait for your nerves to calm down. Practice making yourself calm. You cannot depend on external factors to dictate what you do, when you do it, and how you feel. You have control over what you think, how you feel. Well, let me take that back. You can't control when anxiety hits you, but you can always control how you deal with it. And that's the most important part. I mean, that's just life, right? You can't control tragedies that happen, like a car accident hitting you, or maybe someone breaking up with you, but you have control over how you deal with that. <laughs> A reset point. I wonder what he means by this. Ah, okay. A psychological aspect to dial you in. Man, that's awesome. That's great advice. 
I've heard that. I'm going to try that. Focus on one point to make you calm. Oh, is he going to dial in? Of course he is, because he got the Shimada Mart magic. Or the miscommunication. That's why the best place to serve is in between two players. Oh, triple block from Asahi! Yeah, on serve receive, you have to attack the ball. I like this music, by the way. It's like... Kind of house. A little EDM-ish. Oh, another good serve. Yamaguchi with the comeback. Love it. That's exactly what you want from your serving specialist. A little extra energy, a little extra pump. Okay, but he served three times in a row, got two points for Karasuno, totally worth it. Now he's getting momentum back on his side. Oh, zooming with the bounce. So I want to see more Tsuki play, because he's been utilizing that full approach. I think he's Tsuki, if I remember, is a pretty good spot server. And Kakiyama's still trying to figure out the depth perception. Ooh, if he thinks he got it. That means you know it's over. <laughs> That's a great quality to have to approach each rep with no fear. Oh, it's Kakeyama visualizing too. This is a great graphic, man. Black and white. Dang, this is sick. Holy cow, man. That's an amazing animation. It's like the Matrix when you've unlocked Matrix there. Wow. Just when I thought the animation was starting to get shaky, that was a beautiful scene. We gotta watch that again. The echoey ball. And then also how the characters, we got a freeze frame on one of these characters. This is a completely different shadow type to animate because when you're doing shadows, it's more of like a transparent coloring, which means that the color is see-through and you can just keep the original lines that you drew. Here, you have to draw individual blocky, thick shapes. So you're almost animating two different figures on top of itself. It's really difficult to do, especially with motion. And to keep the proportions on point without making the shadows look like clothes, right? If, if you think about it, the shadows are a solid black colors, it's really easy to make it look like a, a cape or something awkward like that. And then they keep the ball highlighted. Oh, this is like the Matrix when Neo finally opens his eyes and he sees the Matrix code or the Matrix code for what it is. Awesome, man. Man, to even just conceptualize this scene is impressive. Like, even beyond the animation ability, to just think about this scene and to have the camera pan and to have the black and white shadows and the perspective lines. Well, you get two apologies from Kageyama. <laughs> that was a cute scene. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 10. This episode was every bit as engaging, exciting, interesting as you guys touted it to be. I was so focused on waiting for the gameplay, but the storytelling, I mean, we got to go back to that scene where Shimizu was making a parallel between her former track and field athlete and applying those skills to her team manager position. And then we go into the flashback lesson that Yamaguchi had with his mentor about how to deal with anxiety. And you do want to have that reset point. Now, it could be a space on the court. Sometimes it could be just looking at your shoes but you do need to practice a trigger that can reset you back to ground zero. Because reality is the anxiety will start to build up again 
But as long as you have that reset point, whether it's looking at a teammate, a space in the crowd, which I actually don't recommend because the crowd can be kind of distracting, or maybe at the ball. Originally, I didn't think I was doing that, but I actually am doing that naturally. For my jump serving, what I do is I look at the ball and then I look at where I'm gonna serve. I have to do those things in that order. Otherwise, I'm gonna feel too nervous when I'm about to serve a tough serve in a big moment. And then we gotta talk about that ending scene where Kageyama clicks and you knew something special was gonna happen when he tilts his head. I think anytime Kageyama tilts his head slightly, something cool just happened or something cool is about to happen. And then that ability for him to unlock his death perception that I, I can't get over yet. I'm probably gonna continue to watch that scene again after I'm done recording this because it's so exciting and inspirational and it's just beautiful artwork. And to interpret being unlocked visually in that way, big props to the director and the scriptwriter on that scene. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out all my other Haiku Reaction videos from all the other seasons by clicking this playlist right here and you'll probably like this video right here.